Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Alex and today I'm going to show you how you can implement the more comfortable version of Mario using Python for PSAT 6 at CS50. So I've already shown how you can implement this in C. It's going to be very easy to do it in Python. And I'm also going to refer to the same to the same scheme I showed you last time for the easier version. So I'm not going to get in detail while explaining it. Let's quickly go to my tablet to, to recall where we ended last time. So we had this four by four block because I gave an example of a pyramid with a height of four. And we discovered something like relation between the current row we're on the size, the number of hashes and um, the spaces. So if the size is 4 and we're on row 1, the number of fields in squares or the number of hashes is going to be equal to the row, so it's going to be 1. On the second row we're going to have 2 hashes, on the third row 3 hashes, etc. Um, regarding the spaces, the number of spaces is always equal to the size minus the current row. So if we are on row 1, and we have a pyramid of size of 4, we're going to have 3 spaces because 4 minus 1 is 3. And on the second row we're going to have 4 minus 2, which is 2, etc. Now, the only thing we want to add today for the more comfortable version is like after we have this basic pyramid, we want to also add one column uh, with only spaces um, like that. So this is going to be only spaces. Sorry for making it so look so bad, but um, there we go. Um, and then we want to do kind of the same thing, like this on the left, but we want it to be mirrored. So now we want the hashes on the left, uh, and we don't even need to add spaces on the right because uh, we can just have like one hash in the beginning and then nothing. So this is actually way easier than the previous, like than the left pyramid, because we can only add one hash on, let me get the, the, the black marker. So we can add one hash or one field in squared on the first row, then two squares in the second row, or two hashes, then three of them on the third row. I don't have any more space, but I hope you understood it. So we just want to add an empty colon at first and then um, the number of hashes once more without caring um, for the spaces. So let's go to the ID and start implementing it. So first I'm going to import um, the get int method from the CS50 library. So, so from CS50 import get int. Then we want to ask the user for the height of the pyramid. Now I'm going to call it size again. Um, and I'm going to say get int and now we can pass in some kind of a prompt so it may be enter the height or the height of the pyramid doesn't really matter like that once the user has entered it um, we have to check um, if it belongs to this interval from 1 to 8 inclusive if it doesn't we want to reprompt the user to enter a number so I've already shown that last time, that's why I'm not going to explain it uh, thoroughly. You can go back to the previous tutorial if you need to. So I'm just going to say while, and while the size is less than 1, um, or the size is greater than 8. So this, is, this means that it's invalid, because it cannot be less than 1 or, it can, or like greater than 8. It has to be um, within this interval between 1 and 8. So if it's invalid, then I want to prompt the user to enter it again, like that. Um, but if it is valid, we're going to skip this and directly go on to the next line. So now we, we need to have a for loop to go through each row of our pyramid, right? So I'm going to say for each row in the range, and now we're going to have from 1 to size plus 1. Again, I have explained why it's size plus 1 and not just size in the previous video. You can see the link in the description. Um, so you can go back to it, refer to it, and then come back. Um, so we go through of the line of the rows and let's just print them. So I'm going to say print row. And I'm going to come here, say Python uh, Mario Pi. 
Um, we have invalid syntax. Oh, so we haven't closed this bracket here. Um, so that that's what the problem was. So I can come and rerun it. So this time we can uh, see the prompt for entering the height. I'm going to say I want a period of height of 4. And we see the row. So row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. Okay, that works perfectly. Now let's decide, like, let's calculate how many... Um, how many hashes we need and how many spaces we need. So first about the hashes, uh, we realized that the number of hashes is always equal to the current row. So I can say hashes equals row. Again, you don't need that if you're more advanced, but for beginners it's um, a good idea to have a separate variable which explicitly describes the, the, like the hashes. And then how can we calculate the number of spaces? So uh, we've already got to the conclusion that the number of spaces is going to be equal to um, the number, sorry, the size of the pyramid, so the entire size, for instance, 4, minus the number of hashes. So if we have a pyramid of size of 4, we'll have, um, and we are on the first row, we'll have 1 hash, and then 4 minus 1, which is 3 spaces. If you're on the second row, we'll have 4 minus 2, which is 2 spaces. And now we just need a couple of prints, uh, prints to um, like display the pyramid. So we we'll start off by printing the spaces, right? Because if we come here, we see that first we have the spaces, three spaces, then one hash, then two spaces, two hashes, etc. So we're currently working on the left part of the pyramid. And I'm going to say print a space. And now how many times do we want to repeat it? Well, we already have the number of spaces. So I can just say it's time spaces. This means that the interpreter is going to take this empty, uh, sorry, this space and print it this number of times. So for instance, if spaces is like four, we're going to print four spaces. Um, and then we want to print a hash. And now how many times do we want to repeat this hash? Because it's going to be different for every row. Well, we already have the number of hashes. It's equal to the row. So I can say times hashes. And now we can test it to check if we can see the pyramid, the, like the left part, the left pyramid. Um, so let me come back here and run this. <coughs> so it wants a height of 4. But we see that something is not correct here. So first we have three spaces, then one hash on the next line, then we have uh, two spaces, two hashes on the next line. So the problem is that, like I explained the previous time, we automatically get a new line here. So if we want to avoid getting this new line, because we want both the spaces and the hash on the same line, we can um, go back to our file and say um, end equals an empty string, which means do not add a new line. So let's come back um, and run it again, I have 4, All right, perfect. So we can now see uh, that we've correct, that we've successfully created a solution for the left pyramid. Now, um, we need to add, um, let me check if it's one or two spaces, so two spaces between the two pyramids. So we can add a new print statement in order to add two spaces. That's pretty easy, but we can also add an end here, which is not going to be an empty string. Let me use single quotes just for consistency. Um, the, the end is not going to be an empty string, but a string with two spaces, which is exactly what we want to achieve. So we want to have the hash and then two spaces on each line. So if I rerun this, uh, we like, oh, sorry, I messed up something. Let's see what I did. So we're going to need something in the end. I'm just going to say an empty string um, because now if we add this, we do not add any new lines, but we want to have a new line uh, at the end uh, of the entire uh, row. So let me rerun this, add a four. So now I can see this and we can notice that we also have two spaces at the end of each row, which is exactly what we wanted to achieve. So now I can come back and remove this because we still have to implement the right pyramid. And as I said, it's very easy. We just need to add the number of hashes. So we need one hash on the first row, two hashes on the second row, and three hashes on the third row, etc. 
So I'm going to say here and uh, come here and say print a hash again. The number of hashes. So it's very similar to to this one here. But I just need to have a new line at the end, so I'm not going to add anything here. I don't want a separate end, like, I don't want a different end, I just want a new line. So let's come back, run this, and see if it works. Alright, perfect. So we can notice that we have three spaces, then a hash, then two empty, like, two spaces again, then a hash. So here we have two spaces, two hashes, two spaces, two hashes, etc. So that's that's the main logic for this problem. First, we calculate the number of hashes and spaces. Then we print the spaces we need in the beginning as a padding to our hashes. Then we print the hashes themselves, the hashes of the left pyramid. We leave two spaces between the left and the right pyramid and then we enter the hashes for the right pyramid. So that was everything. If you have any questions regarding CS15 in general, feel free to enter my Discord server. I'm very active there and I help CS50 students. You can um, also contact me on any other social media uh, if you, in case you don't have Discord. That was everything for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and I'm going to see you next time.